Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome Hi. back to another Indie Comics talk. I vibe with that music. That is, yeah. that is background danceable music. And uh, I, I, I saw our guests vibing with the music a little bit, too, <laughs> in, in the background. So, um, yeah, I'm really loving this intro music now. We're just having a little boogie on our own together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, tonight, uh, I'm, I'm so excited about who we got for guests tonight. Yes. We've got the creative team behind Know Your Station. We've got Liana Ooh. Kangas and Sarah Gailey. Welcome in. Hello. Hello. Thank you so Hello. much for having us. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I, yes, thanks for so hanging excited. out and vibing. Yeah. I, I saw the vibe been going on. <laughs> oh yeah, fun fact: disco is like one of my favorite genres of music, and I don't think a lot of people know that. <laughs> well, so EDM is just, just disco that's been modernized. Actually, uh, I think you can probably <laughs> see it on my wall. It's I, I don't see any hint that disco <laughs> is on your wall at all. Nope. <laughs> I have to block the expletive word, but next <laughs> to it because uh, it's not. You know. I love it. It's it's all right, uh, but you both have been doing some awesome creative things recently. Uh, Liana, you had True Cult come out from IDW. Uh, Sarah, you also had Eat the Rich from Boom Studios, and then all of your books that have been coming out recently, and all this has been going on just like last couple years. Um, so I'm excited to talk about all of this tonight, or as much as we have time to talk about tonight. <laughs> Um, uh, and then I also have, I saw in the background, uh, she said destroy Liana and some of your cover work. I think Liana froze though. Oh, I thought that this was just a very elegant. Yeah. I thought she was just <laughs> I, I, at she first, I thought so too. Uh, while, while they're frozen, I'm going to just say hi to some people in the chat. Charlie Stickney's here. Uh, Charlie is, is our guest tomorrow night. Um, Hello, Charlie. Hello. Oh, you're uh, back. Michelle. There we go. I'm back. There. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. You were just elegantly sat there. <laughs> you know, it was very elegant on the internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but for those that maybe somehow made it here and, and haven't heard about your books, I guess we'll start out with a little bit about how you both got into creating uh, comics and and writing in general. Uh, who wants to go first? Not it. <laughs> oh, take good. away, Leo. Mm. Um, wow. Uh, we were kind of just talking. Uh, Caroline and I were just commiserating about having had, you know, <laughs> working uh, re comics retail. Um, but I liked comics at an early age. I think like I read a lot of manga growing up, and uh, I always wanted to do art of some form. And I think throughout the years, I had collected a lot of weird comics, interesting comics, um, <laughs> uh, R2 digests from like grocery stores, you know, like whatever mm -hmm. we could afford. But um, I had like discovered Spider-Man and like Robin were my first two favorite big uh, like licensed characters that I really liked a lot. And my old shop, um, Famous Faces and Funnies, actually, was like the first shop that I went to outside of like Barnes and Noble. Yeah. And I went there a lot. And um, Rick, the owner, is wonderful. And he would like ask me to come draw at like uh, Free Comic Book Day, even though I was like at the time either working retail or like my old day job or things like that. And I just kind of stayed in the comics community. I started helping out. Uh, working like conventions and things like that and when i lived in canada i actually um partially managed a comic shop for a little while and one of my uh one of the customers of the shop who was a friend of mine was like why aren't you drawing comics and i was like i don't you can do that you know what i mean like i didn't really think that i could just like switch careers change careers into doing comics and then i was like you know what well maybe i could try and maybe who's who's to say, maybe I'll just do one, you know, try it out, see how it goes. And I, you know, being an avid collector, like I have an unrealistic amount of uh, comic issues and trades and books and graphic novels. I was like, I definitely love the storytelling format. So mm -hmm. I'm going to continue and start to do this. 
And I have a special superpower, I think, in that I do not give up and I'm extremely stubborn. And so when I realized that I liked it, I was just like, I'm just going to do this, I guess. And so I've been doing it ever since. And it turns out it is my full-time job now. So. It's a, it's a yeah. fun journey to, to getting into comics. I feel like a lot of people out there, if they're, you know, artistic and, and looking to find a way in, I think just doing it is, is the yeah. way to do it. Just doing it. And also like people would be surprised at how incredibly nice everybody in the industry is and willing to give advice. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how I got really far was not being scared or at least getting over the hurdle of being scared to ask for advice. And I think most of my first uh, interactions with folks in comics, I'm now really close with them. Like Erica Schultz mm -hmm. gave me some of like the best advice that I have ever had. Um, and we've collaborated together and is a great friend. And like Vita Ayala also gave me a lot of great advice and we also collaborated together. And it's really cool because like, that's one of my favorite parts of working in the industry is being able to give advice back to folks who don't quite know how to break in or like think that they might not be able to. And I'm like, you can, let me show you how, you know. You're like, I yeah, kind of made it. Say, I'm gonna help you make it. I've, I don't think I've ever gotten to work with anyone who is as generous with their time and expertise as Liana. Um, just the, the degree of openness to sharing wisdom is like like I, I have worked with some very generous and kind and thoughtful people who have taught me a lot of things um but i can't think of anyone who i've encountered who does not directly make money off of me making money um <laughs> who has taught me more all i ask is that you write me in all of your books <laughs> <laughs> You should be careful what you ask for because my, she has my to books be in the are same not outfit. pleasant. I know Every I will die in like very gruesome it. ways and I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like seeing into the future a worse way that I know that mm -hmm. I'll be going out in a less terrible way. It's like preparing <laughs> me, right? It could happen I, this way. Yeah. Yeah. It won't be good. Maybe one day. Yeah. Do you have oh, the so worst possible death? created in a in a comic mm -hmm. like whatever co happens in real life can't be so bad right exactly. there you go yeah can't be it's, it can't be bad if it's not as bad as the death that we just put together for issue five for yeah. example <laughs> at least you're not I, being brutally filleted on a space station oh yeah I unless was, that's I was, how you want to go and no yeah you could be <laughs> prophesizing this is fine I think earlier I wanted to screenshot something that I had said to Gailey because I think, you know, I was just like, you know, normal work day, just drawing X, Y, and Z. And I prefaced that as they are spoilers, but it was really funny that I was like, nah, this is our job. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, love, I yeah. love what we do. And I love getting to work with someone who is so both generous um, with wisdom and also open to hearing are we a swearing podcast yes. oh yes i have my filter yeah uh it, it's it's great to work with someone who's open to hearing the most fucked up things that come out of my mm -hmm. skull my little noggin just brews up a piece of <laughs> horrible slime and i go yeah what do you think and liana goes wow it's so nice <laughs> <laughs> I love it. that's the fanfare <laughs> yay <laughs> This is everything I've ever wanted to draw in my life. Uh. Oh, yeah. There's there's some very, very, very positive things happening uh, on the pages of Know Your Station. <laughs> <laughs> it's a friendly book. Yeah. Very, very, very reader friendly. Um, uh, no, very no trauma happening in the book at all. Nothing at all there. Uh, <laughs> Yes, yes, Charlie. <laughs> exactly. Now that we see someone get skinned alive, now we're now we're gonna get brutal. Baby steps, my dude. Baby steps. That's just the order. Yeah, <laughs> that certainly has to deal. I'm like, is that your origin story, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how how did you get into writing? I know 
writing novels was was the first step there before getting into comics. But what led you down that path? That I love that question because like there's a there's the kind of the simple interview answer, but it also sort of feels like um, like a why are you the way you are? <laughs> and there's so many answers to that. Mom, dad, like <laughs> in, there, in the specific kind of broken eye as a person. To- that I mean, really like. speaking. <laughs> However you um, want to interpret that question, we, we can we can get into wherever you want to go. <laughs> no, no, we'll, we'll go the we'll go the career answer. Um, I <laughs> I spent you know a lot of time kind of looking for um, outlets for this it, oh, horrific fire hose of creativity that lives inside me, um, and I spent a lot of time aiming that fire hose at different things. I worked in the theater for a while. Um, mm-hmm. I did a lot of like uh, uh, fabric crafts, and, like hand sewing and costuming and stuff like that. Um, I did a lot of painting and none of it quite clicked. I think in part mm-hmm. because I'm incredibly impatient and I couldn't get good enough, fast enough to do the mm-hmm. things that I had in my brain. Yeah. The ADHD, I, as, as the outcome, I get it. You get a week <sighs> at most. Absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal. I would have this beautiful idea for a painting and then I would sit down and start working on it and be like, this is not. It looks like nothing like you ever thought it would look like. And you're like, not in a good way. Yeah, exactly. But I um, feel right. When you write, you're just forcing other people to do the work of making the thing look that way inside their own (laughs) head, which is great for me. Um, I had been working with someone who I met through my time in the theater. Um, who was a writer who asked me to do something called beta reading, which if you're not familiar, is effectively being someone's first reader and giving them your first immediate reactions and responses to what they're reading. It's usually not a formal critique so much as like a like a, a gut check about the work. And I didn't know that. So I was giving like full formal developmental edits um, mm-hmm. on all of his work. And... <laughs> I started to realize like, oh, he takes all my notes and his stories get better. Like I I give these notes and his stories get a lot better. So I decided to try writing something of my own. Um, and then I, I have not stopped. Like I just, <laughs> I have not stopped. And there, there were some ups and downs in there, but for the most part, I've just been kind of chasing the feeling of that, the challenge that came with that paint, with the paintings. Um, Every time I hit a limit where I say, oh, the thing that's in my mind isn't quite happening on the page, that's where I know that I've found something I want to pursue until I can do it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm fundamentally a caveman. I'm a persistence predator. I'm going to follow that impala until it gets tired and I can catch it. Um, and that's sort of been how my writing career has happened. I wrote short stories I wrote, I I want to say it's 27 short stories in my first year of writing. Um, And then I said, oh, I, oh, certainly not. No. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I was writing like, I would sit down and write a short story in a day. I had so much energy in my brain. (laughs) Don't worry, it's gone. I use the energy. (laughs) Um, I don't know. That's a sharp contrast, my friend. (laughs) <laughs> and then you know I've, I've just continued chasing what's interesting and chasing what's challenging in the writing world across genres across lengths um and across forms so that then kind of you looking for that next challenge and that led you over to writing comics yeah i th- i mean i so i started writing comics when um an editor at boom studios who's no longer there uh, emailed me and said, do you have any interest in writing comics? And I said, I don't know how to do that. I wouldn't be any good at it. Um, which is usually, I now know the red flag that says this is going to become part of your life. Because um, you're going to figure out how to be good at it. Yeah. And he said, well, let's talk. And let's talk about if you have any interest in developing you know, stories. But while we were having those conversations, he said, um, have you ever heard of a show called Steven Universe. And oh. I, I like, like pushed away from my computer desk and just screamed at the top of my lungs for like probably 10 solid minutes. And then wrote back a very hinged email that said, indeed, I yeah. have heard of 
that television <laughs> show. Why would why do you ask, my good man? Um, and I had the opportunity to write for Steven Universe, which is like the perfect mm -hmm. introduction to writing comics. It's a it's a kids' property. The stories you're telling are fairly straightforward, but not simple. And I got to learn the form. I got to learn about the craft of of writing comics and about the industry and about the immense amount of collaborative work that goes into making a book. Um, and as I was writing Steven Universe, I got to work with that editor at Boom More to develop Eat the Rich. And it's kind of, it's kind of just been a ride from there. I've gotten to write on uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which is a different, very different IP from Steven Universe, but just as much fun. Yeah. <laughs> and then do you find it more difficult to write IPs versus your own stuff? Like, do you find the things you have to do versus want to do hard to manage in that versus like when you're just like, I can do whatever I want? I think, you know, they're very different. Um, writing IP, you get to be, a, you, you get to be a little more, um, story focused because the characters are already developed writing original work you need to be at least a little bit story focused which is like <laughs> not where i tend to <laughs> drive when i'm writing i really find a lot of freedom in absorbing the voice of ip you know I, ip is all voice it's all soaking up the established mm -hmm. language and yeah. and rhythm of the characters and so i tend to find more challenge in writing original work but also more freedom more more of a sense of like fun exploring your own i always idea. wonder about that because not a lot of the people that we get to talk to do both so it's also the the collaboration in ip is totally different um in you know in buffy for example i write the script and then send it in and it gets passed to an artist who I might not know ahead of time who the artist is going to be on that book because the the schedule is, is so fast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like if an artist needs to drop off for some other projects, they might need to bring someone else on. Whereas with this IP with Know Your Station, I'm working with Liana directly on every single panel. We're, we're talking it yeah. through, we're building story together. Um, I'm getting to see how Liana builds story in the art and then respond to that in the, in the writing. And it's a very different level of collaboration. With the, you know, with the artists that you don't know necessarily going in, do you have to be a little bit more, I guess, specific and direct with how you describe what's happening in the scenes versus working with Liana, you guys kind of just talk back and forth what's happening? For me, this is far from universal, but for me, it's totally opposite um, yep. with IP because the characters and sets are frequently really established. Mm -hmm. I don't have to describe nearly so much. Yeah. I can just say, you know, okay. Buffy looks at Xander and they're in the magic shop and the artist has miles and miles of yeah. reference to work yeah. with. Whereas when I'm writing for Liana, I'm trying to say like, you know, here's the here's the acting, here's the scene, here's where the focus is, but your discretion for, you know, these background elements. Um, I don't know. And Liana, you've you've drawn from scripts, obviously, quite a lot beyond mine. What's the am I giving more detail or scanter detail? What's what's your experience? Um, no, I really enjoy what you put in our scripts and I don't obviously I haven't read any of your IP scripts yet but I feel like knowing you as a writer like they'd probably be pretty similar and like I I think you just write as you're building the character for me because we're building the character the whole time because it's like how does this person react to x y and z and like is it a different reaction versus another issue because of whatever happens um and it's cool because I think while you're describing their voice like for the page, I think you give me a lot of freedom in our scripts, but have so much detail that I can play around with it, right? Like it's not, 
it's not too structural. It's very like, uh, here's a whole bunch of really cool ideas. What do you think? And then you're always like super happy when I build on that or like, you know, play with a couple of the things based off of, I'm just thinking about like <laughs> our pages where we do like a whole bunch of background gags, but like, obviously I think we have the luxury of talking back and forth. Like if you had a different, uh, or I had a different act in Was a panel in the, mind. Uh, oh, that's absolutely one of the background <laughs> gags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. Like Sarah will send a whole list of stuff, which is really fun. And then I'll just like add a couple little tiny things, mm -hmm. just like pepper them in there. It's ever and so it's like so with that. It's like, you got to watch the foreground and the background, get everything. Yeah. The... I... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I saw one of the inks that came through today for issue five. And Liana added this background gag that absolutely yeah. sent me. I was at a doctor appointment today and I was sitting hey, in the too. gown waiting for the doctor to come in, <laughs> like looking at inks on my phone. <laughs> and I just started losing it. And the doctor opens the door and is like, the first impression of me is that I am laughing by myself. <laughs> uh, trying to remember where the other one that's I was rereading uh, the stack of books. Was that in issue three? Yeah, that's an issue. That three, is yeah. all Sarah. It's so great. <laughs> the, so uh, great. the bottom book in particular, maybe we should try it. An analysis of the Hunger Games by George H. W. X. Bush Cheney. <laughs> I had me cracking. I missed that the first time, and I had to come back. Like I'm flipping through. I'm like, you know what? I don't think I read these titles. And I got to that one. I dying. My my favorite thing to do as a comics writer is find the note that makes me start stupid, ugly laughing to myself. And the the image of a Bush Cheney wedding <laughs> just really sent me. It sent me over the edge. Yeah. And of course there would be a hyphenate family. Yeah. Oh of course. <laughs> oh yeah. And then the, the H They're not agreeing on anything other than that. Just like keep adding letters into the middle. Just <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Yeah, maybe yeah. we should try it, an analysis yeah. of the Hunger Games. And um, that's perfect for for the the people who have the book, the the billionaires <laughs> on the space station. Uh, seems seems about right for them. It's like maybe the worst one of idea. my all time favorite uh, like gags that actually got compounded on was the nine eleven commemorative surfboard. That was in yeah. issue one, but yeah. then somebody commissioned me uh, like a full, uh, surprisingly asked me for a lease. And I said, do you have any preference of how I draw a lease? Like, we're pretty new here. We've only had issue one release. Are you, mm -hmm. you know? And so I was like, Sarah, I have the perfect idea. And somebody commissioned me for a lease. Can we please do this really cool picture of Elise at the beach with the 9-11 surfboard. Oh my god. <laughs> and then Sarah wrote up an entire like uh essentially like magazine write-up for this piece. Oh my god. I have it. I have the oh write-up. Can I can I yes. share it? Please read it. Please read it. Liana, did this break the the boundary of commission? Ethics? Oh no. Can you read this description? Uh, okay. He would be delighted that we are talking about it. I think he is wonderful. <laughs> now, okay, so here's here's the, the image description. These colors do run to the beach. Elise, the station security liaison on the first resort, knows that the best way to prevent mythologized tragedy from being weaponized by an endless bloodthirsty war machine is to hang 10. Here you can see her getting ready for dawn patrol with her commemorative 9-11 Never Forget surfboard. Originally part of the late Alberto Fairmont's collection, this sick stick was stoked to get tubular with Elise after she inflicted liberty on the recently dead billionaire's valuables. Before too long, a second wave will be hitting the beach, and Elise will be pentagon before you can say cowabunga. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh my I God. just love amazing. 
I love to be stupid. Yeah. But the the amount of I just I, I have no other words. I'm trying to find a picture of the commission to share with the chat because this is just ten out of ten. <sighs> weird if I also kind of kind of want to see Elise like writing it in space like the Silver Surfer. Oh, I think that's very natural urge. I think, I think Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Can we just get like a newspaper that's like from the station? <laughs> Can it just be a thing you do? Oh my god. A, a, a first a newsletter. <laughs> like a gazette. $2 a month for it. Get these would, like Mail-in orders for though. for replica commemorative items from Earth that the billionaires are purchasing for their their housing. Mm -hmm. It's like a Sears catalog, but it's like the ones with the books and stuff. Can can you get one of those like old comic? It's got like a fill out sheet thing, in the back. Issue number five. Oh my god! And it's oh just god. all that. It's just that. Or the trade paperback. I I would write a William Sonoma catalog style. <laughs> you can't <laughs> say that because I will draw it. That's liar. <laughs> this is Liana. This is how we can trap you into collaborating with me forever. Is just endless stupid jokes <laughs> that you says, can't escape. Boom oh. says instead of a second arc, we just ask you to do this catalog. <laughs> it's a compendium <laughs> to the book. Your <laughs> family picks. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for the omnibus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're definitely drawing you both in that if that ever happens. Yes. Please. Oh yeah. He's getting our picture taken yeah. like <laughs> on a, no on like a black velvet black light style. Oh. Yes. Oh my god. Oh, oh my face hurts. Uh, what earth item would I want the most? Hmm. You know one of them has to be like the nuclear football. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> the nuclear football, but inside it's just a picture of like a dog that should never have existed, but human beings bred it into existence. You mean pugs? <laughs> they're so tragic. I love them so much, but they're so tragic. <laughs> so tragic. Oh my god. Hey, David. David. They're struggling so hard. I would pick like an elementary school's time capsule from like 1995. <laughs> oh my god. It has god. to be somewhere <laughs> in between so that way it's like a surprise gift that I get to open and just like see all of these obviously now passed away children that have like <gasps> made these drawings and stuff. But there needs to be selections like what years do you want and there's just like Somewhere in there. Oh my god, someone made a cottage industry of digging up all the time capsules and then selling them at a yeah. market. Honestly, that that's not too the far fetched. That that options. Like, what's this? It's a thumb drive. I've never heard of that. Floppy disk. I like that you just went like whoop, and the implication <laughs> to me is that you you did it, you like took it like a shot. <laughs> You've got the sun drive I mean, and it's it swallowed like a pill. A shot of data. Station. Maybe that's where the USB drives go <sighs> now. I don't know these things. If I lived in space, if I lived in space on a space station and I had the opportunity to choose any Earth thing to have replicated and brought to me in space, it would be a water slide <laughs> from a water park. I don't like going on water slides. They, they go too high up for me. Um, oh, no, too same. scary. But I do think it would be a great waste of the limited amount of fresh water on the station <laughs> to, that... to be like, we got to lube this baby up. I totally thought you meant like, you know, the redneck ones that you have in a backyard and you put like Dawn dish soap on like to like slip and slide, slide across. Like slide. 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 Yes. Yes. I say that this as a proper Floridian. <laughs> It's got no. You gotta see. You gotta have like a tube slide that goes like outside, so you can like see yeah. space. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> but it's clearly enclosed, right? You don't just accidentally. No, 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 no,
like a little window on it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, it seems we're like fun. The, we're seems fun. Like the the perfect uh, billionaire use of of funds for a space station. So let's that's that's our that's our contribution. Picture. <laughs> <laughs> the things we could do if we were billionaires. You have to remind me to draw that. <laughs> I mean, we repurpose the escape pod hatch because your slide has to exit somewhere. Oh my god, that, that, they, the just, they are slide straight off of it into space. Yeah, as long as you got your suit on, you good. I feel like you're not good. I feel like you are not. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure on him, like you I mean, going down at the end. I'm no spaceologist, but I feel like you die. Spaceologist. Listen, I live where NASA is, so I kind of am. Oh, you're the expert, yeah. That's there, how this works, right? There is a whole nother side of this ship that we have not seen. Yeah, look at look at that mm, under, yeah. like, little nook part. You could I, put a slide I'm there. I'm just saying, there could be slides over there. No, you're right. This is engineering in action. <laughs> mm-hmm. Clearly, I know what I'm doing, guys. The magic of flying into space, and we choose a slide. <laughs> I mean, you know, at least one in, person would buy it. That's what the S in NASA stands for. <laughs> Slides. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the, the, the somewhat serious look on your face there. I think you broke me. So this is a story about slides in space. Um, <laughs> Soon this is a story about it. the real raging waters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this, honestly, I feel like this page here alone, I it, it, it hooked right off the, the bat. The cross out this, cross out oh, the description started out a refugee, a refuge for those fleeing climate collapse. The, the just the crossing out to a hub for the future. <laughs> I was like, all right, I already love this. You tried. Yeah. I um, I worked as an office administrator um, for a large tech design firm in San Francisco for a while, and a lot of the worst excesses of the people aboard the first resort are based on firsthand experiences I've had with people who oh are just love it. totally out of touch with. Um, reality and yeah. i watched these kinds of workshopping things happen mm. where we would it was a consulting firm and so we would get a client that was like clearly quite evil and <laughs> and they would come in and they would be like our vision is to revitalize healthcare for vulnerable people and over the course of like five weeks they would shift to like, our vision is to sell facial recognition software to the CIA in order to suppress small governments. How do we, how do we say that? We have a vision for change. And mm. it's just like the way that things get digested mm. into non-specifics in order to conceal yeah. um, mm -hmm. total moral bankruptcy is, it. it's very bad, but it also is, Right comedy to me. A hub for someone's future, not yours. Yeah. Also, like, what's a hub? What the hell is a hub? A hub. That, that doesn't mean nothing. It was, it's like a pod, you know. Corporate culture verbiage. I think that was delicious. the name of a building on campus during college. <laughs> it was just, it was the hub. Mm, we had one of yeah. those, yeah. With the I, student uh, union building. My bus stopped there. Oh, there you go. I but, love that, though, because it's like we don't want to call it a multi-purpose building because that sounds kind of elementary school. But also, like, yeah. that's what it is. It's like, I don't know, eat there, hang out, take the yeah. bus. Office, like, student bookshore, cafeteria. Yeah. Buzzwords, baby. Yeah. 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 The, I would say the other thing in this story that, like, there's so many things about Elise that just, I feel like, connect and just the, uh, I, I took a picture of the line because 
I knew I would not be able to find the page real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, her, her interaction with uh, St. Bridget, one, throughout everything is just yeah. phenomenal. I love the the humor that happens there from from our little robot companion. She's uh, so of sorts. without intending to be. Or maybe she is. I don't know, but I love her. The uh, it's going it's going to go great. Let's aim lower. It's going to go fine. Lower. Your life is finite, and eventually you will die. <laughs> Perfect. A mood. But I I connect with that. <laughs> You got days where you just got to start with like, hey, existence, right? Yeah. I mean, there are days that I start out and I think this day will be over. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, so I'm, I'm just so able to, I have to give myself, I have to give myself an injection once a week and it's supremely unpleasant. Like they tell you that you'll get used to it and you don't, it just sucks. And the way that I get myself through it is like, this can't last more than a minute. And that's just Elise with her entire yeah. life. Yes. Like, this moment can't last more than a moment. Yeah. Like, this will be done soon. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? She's There's like, I can't be alive that... for more than 50 more years. So. There's something that's like, if you just look at everything like 10 seconds, then this will be over in 10 seconds. And you just keep doing yeah. that and you're fine. <laughs> Until there's no more seconds. Until there's no more 10 seconds left to count. Yeah. <sighs> But yeah, uh, that, like, just the whole vibe between them throughout this is so much fun. Uh, I, I still, uh, from the start, I, I have suspicions about St. Bridget, though. Um, even though there's, there's like, really good things I love about St. Bridget, I am very suspicious. <laughs> Are you a suspicious person in general in your life? How far, how far back does this go for you? What was your childhood like? Hmm? Yeah. Well, How was your mom and dad? The first time your mom uh, forgot you at the shopping mall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they have a great relationship. It that. all started when I was fought. No, <laughs> we got we got a, a sofa to lay down on. Um, yes, I think if you express that suspicion to Saint Bridget, she would very helpfully offer you any number of pharmaceutical interventions. Can, can, can I get a sedative? <laughs> <laughs> How That's what blue is for. I don't know that she'll necessarily offer so much as just go on and give it to you. you she knows what you need, girl. You need this. Got you back. Yeah. That's a proactive friend right there. That's supportive. She's not even going to give you time to answer. She's like, I got you. You need this. Yeah. She this knows even before you know that you want something, she exactly. knows that you're, you're going to want it. Um, and then you're incapacitated. And so she doesn't really have an opportunity to check that hypothesis, you know? Very true. Like, well, we'll find out later. <laughs> so what friends are for. <laughs> exactly. With with creating everything on on the station, what did you draw inspiration for for the just the design of everything? Um, was that Liana? Was that you that that really worked on on pulling that together, or like a combined? I, I think it should look something like this, and then Liana, you pulled. From like somewhere futuristic too. versus actual like tactile stuff that we can imagine being there. Yeah, because there's definitely a good mix of like futuristic spaceshipy, but then like you go into their their homes, apartments, however you want to call them. And there's there, there's a feel of like more modern current stuff going on. Yeah, I would say uh, it's definitely a collaborative effort. Like the designs that we did before the book started were based off of a meeting that we had. And uh, I had asked for like inspiration stuff um, that was a little bit involved with the team to uh, our editorial team, which was really cool. And uh, it was the first time that Sarah and I really got to meet and like uh, get to know like what the vibe of the book was going to be. And it was really fun to kind of from descriptions of like even the characters were kind of how I built the foundation before I even started on the ship because we had a long discussion about, you know, what sort of like retro futurist, uh, like how do you want to balance like kind of retro futurism with like modern futurism and like how do you want to be unique and different outside of what is so obviously like blatantly out there right now. Um, and having worked on Star Wars and Star Trek, I'm like, oh, now I have a lot of 
things to try to do that are nothing like either of those. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it's very, very much sci-fi future, which I've done sci-fi fantasy before, but mm -hmm. sci-fi future. So it was a lot of like pulling inspiration from like Mobius and um, a lot of, uh, I grew up in Florida near NASA. So like I did a ton of research. Um, there's a, there's a book called how to draw, I think, or 3D there. Um, and I, apologies, I forget the, the name of the guy who did it, but I did a lot of research on that because he does a lot of like breaking down how to draw cars and automobiles and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I really just wanted to take as much inspiration as I could from current uh, living quarters. Cause like, I think the living quarters, sorry, not living quarters, like, um, like the ship, like, uh, everything in the ship besides the billionaires living quarters because Sarah actually very much goes into glorious detail of how each suite <laughs> done. It gave me so much to work with. It was so great because that's very much like each its own project. Mm -hmm. And like, I wanted the interior of like the spaceship. And uh, I think Sarah did too, like very much just to be like, this is a working spaceship. It's simple, easy. Like that's all it is. Like they didn't. A billionaires aren't going to pay attention to what it looks like because they don't care. Yeah, they're, they're not going to be there. And yeah. I was like, that's great for my inking style because I have very like, uh, I would say like a lot of negative space and things like that. So um, I really just wanted to make it kind of look like a little bit of a box. Honestly, um, I didn't want to make it like look super involved because then I was like, oh, then I'd have to draw all of that detail all the time. <laughs> but, you know, like within within reason, because like there are definitely certain levels of the ship that are a lot more uh, unpolished, probably because it has a lot of use. Um, and as you read the book, you kind of get a, a feel for that. But um, the exterior of the spaceship actually came last, which is really fun to talk about because there were many iteration designs. And for those who saw the Franca Villa cover, there was multiple like kind of visual interpretations. But uh, eventually it was, I don't even remember what it was, but all I remember is Sarah and I were discussing it back and forth and we had landed that I think Sarah said something about pizza. And I was like, Oh yeah, that kind of looks like the shape of a pizza. And now I can't un undo it, but it's essentially like the shape of a yacht with a sailboat, but you know, that's essentially yeah, the shape yeah. of a pizza. So uh, I lovingly and endearingly think of it as pizza spaceship, but that's just me. I also, I remember during that conversation, <clears throat> I remember during that conversation, Liana, you saying, do you mean a triangle? <laughs> I'm saying, oh, it's shaped like a pizza slice. <laughs> I'm so glad that you didn't immediately think that that was a derogatory question. <laughs> no, this is why you're the art expert. On the end. <laughs> this is why you're the art expert. You understand shapes and geometries in a way that I can't conceive. Mm -hmm. I just, <sighs> it was such an interesting, like, it, it was like a, it was a journey that all of us took together. And I, I really, truly enjoyed making all the designs for everything, both with Sarah and, and Elizabeth um, and everyone else. It's, it's, it was phenomenal. There are square pizzas and, you know. They do heart-shaped pizza on Valentine's Day, but you know. See, Listen. now we've got another, now we've got another artist in the mix. It's, these are the competing I schools. know. <laughs> and Fabian will school me every time. That's the problem. So <laughs> Fabian, you might be right. You might be right. There's always when you when you get into a new area of study, there's always this incredible journey where you you learn the introductory stuff and you feel like, oh my gosh, I just learned so much. There's so much information. Surely this is everything there is to know. And then you you advance enough that you can see how much you don't <laughs> know. And it's kind of like a stair step process of learning. And I just went through that just now with pizza shapes where <laughs> I thought I knew, 
I thought I knew pizza, and and then I found out about square pizzas, and then heart shaped pizzas came up, and now pizza cones. And now we're and going three D like, with our pizzas. Whoa. This is like string. And then you think of this calzones. Like, I now they I'm also just... like make the dipping sticks that are just pizza that's like cut like into breadstick strips. They're just See, dipping sticks, but it's pizza. I feel like the the level of expertise on display here is really incredible. Um, tonight and I'm just honored to be in the company of intellectuals. I mean, I do have a degree of food. It's nutrition, but still. But you know about flags, you know about pizza, bread. like what else is there? Mm -hmm. It's all that matters. Deconstructed <laughs> pizza, it's kind of like spaghetti if you think about it hard enough and not at all at the same time. Is the so way is that the string theory then of pizza? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. so, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm like, is that is that a time jumping sequel to this book? Uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> no, you're spaghetti. <laughs> Not spaghetti, it's pizza. <laughs> Do we know our spaghetti well enough? Is is the spaghetti the murderer? I mean, you're gonna have to read issue five to find out. Liana, we have to do a rewrite. They know. <laughs> it's all been it's, figured out. It's the spaghetti monster. The spaghetti monster all along. We have to do a Game of Thrones style last episode rewrite fast. My friend's five-year-old kid was right. He is real. The production value. <laughs> Sorry, boom. We gotta we gotta turn this ship around. <laughs> turn Literally. this pizza ship around. <coughs> Listen, all the aliens wanted in the end, it wasn't friendship. It was pizza. Shaped not we like could, pizza. We could bond over that. Good. We could come together over that. I bonded with people I'm over so, pizza. So thrilled that you both are enjoying the book and that you uh have so much input uh on our, i just enjoy that you you see the environment and the world building as it is because sarah and i have so much of an expansive <laughs> world building of this but most people only see this much so i just enjoy that you have, have this much comparatively <laughs> Yes. I also think yeah. part of it too is like we both read manga, so we're both very used to like you read the page and then you're like, all right, now what's actually going on in the book? Yeah. I mean also it's it's a sci-fi future where there's so much you could not be telling us, but is has to be going on in this world to make it a good. Mm -hmm. Um like, and, what's the status of Earth? What's going on there? Right. Like I like I, I could read a tale just about what's happening on Earth. Like I, uh, what did she escape on Earth? Because she's running from something. This is one of the biggest struggles for me of the the mini series form. You know, we've got twenty two pages per issue um, in the script, and five issues, and fitting an entire murder mystery in there, and including the the space station world building. Yeah. I'm just I'm just not a very smart person because I was like, oh, I can pull that off in five issues and give all this world building context about what's happening on Earth and the history of Earth and the history of these corporations. And like, in what reality? There's yeah. 110 script pages total. Um, but I do have like I have I have so much in my little noggin about the way that in order to support a space station, which has all the wealthiest people in society on it, it like sending one person to space requires a huge ecosystem mm -hmm. of support on earth sustaining a residential space station that is not populated by working astronauts that is not populated <laughs> by people with multiple advanced degrees who have been trained to be in outer space it's populated by dipshits who want to put a slide on the outside <laughs> of their suite requires such a huge amount it's a of... private slide i love that so much nobody else on the station gets the slide sorry we've devolved back the slide no we just live here now it just... we live on the slide yeah the slide is where you die literally i mean slide or die acceptable that's how you get rid of that's how you get rid of corpses from the space station is you put them down the spiral chute and they just is, go is that where the officer 
<laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You ask a lot of questions. Um, <laughs> Name added to your yeah. list. <laughs> Is that where I am going after this? <laughs> <laughs> We're on the way. Um, uh, poor unfortunate soul that actually thinks it is a slide. Mm. It's kind of, it's kind of similar to like how um, a, a working cathedral naturally <laughs> defines a city because the city springs up to support the cathedral, right? It springs up to support the workers and the people yeah. who live there and the trade and the commerce and it. Earth essentially at this point exists to sustain the space station. The economies of Earth united to form uh, a refuge and to find a way to solve climate crisis and help humanity go on. And this was the solution is to get rid of turn, them, <laughs> turn humanity into support staff. Um, and it's, it's not different from our, our from like American capitalism. It's not different. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same. And I think that's something that connects very well is the fact that it feels all too real that this is a possible future of, of what's happening in the world. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it's what they want for us. I mean, it, the, there was a kind of, I think, lightly reported on meeting in which a bunch of billionaires said, okay, so if, if the bad things happen and we have to retreat to our, our, um, like our, our little fortresses that we have built, the only word I could um, come up with is strongholds. Yeah, right. Like the, those, the, the, I don't like our, little, our, our little hidey holes. Um, <laughs> how do we keep our security staff from turning on us and rebelling and taking over? Yeah. And a very sincere answer that was floated was shock collars. Like, this is what they want for us. Right, they want for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's, it's not <sighs> difficult to imagine because they're already imagining it. And writing this one after writing Eat the Rich, or it seems like we have a different solution. You have a personal for, vendetta. <laughs> for the billionaires in that one. Do you, are, you, is, are you suggesting there's like a connection? No. no absolutely not. None at all. I, I think these are two entirely different ideas. And <laughs> no, no vendetta comics. against the rich. <laughs> They're just, they're just eating papers. rich people, eating poor people, because you're rich. <laughs> that one's about mysteries, death of rich people. I, I, they're just I funny just, papers, guys. They don't, they don't mean nothing. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I do like both of them, and and you know some of the, uh, maybe not the cannibalism, but the the messages behind what we're we're getting from the. So story. he's going on the list. Yeah. yeah, you don't like you don't like you don't like eating people. Dare you not like cannibalism, sir? Didn't it taste the backbone like of society? Last time, <laughs> the delicious backbone of society. Well, Literally we know where, where those backbones are going to go. <laughs> don't worry about <laughs> it. Hanging up. Don't worry about it. You don't need to know. Yeah, this dude's headed for the slide. <laughs> <laughs> So if I'm reading issue five and the slide does appear <laughs> and there's a body falling out of it, I know whose body that is. <laughs> I mean, for legal reasons, they have to put a helmet on it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But anyone out there who hasn't read this, please, please read it. It's amazing. Boom needs to let you guys just do whatever you want in this world. If you want to write more things in this world, tell us what's happening on Earth. Yeah. Get to expand the whole sci-fi world that we're building here that you don't get to show us all the bits of. I, I hope they, they, they do that. I love it. I truly do love it. I've made like several of my friends and regulars at the shop. I was like, you're going to read this. And they were like, okay. Like you don't get to have an option. <laughs> and then they went, it was good. And I was like, I know. Keep reading. <laughs> we yeah. love uh, friends forcing recommendations. And like, you know, like you're it. going to read it. Okay. You don't understand. You have no option. <laughs> Do you, you, you want the rest of your comments? Do you want this? Yeah. You got to get this. Thank you so much. It's worth it. <laughs>
I feel like the old, really old... beneficial to uh, Gailey and I. So can't just lame. Like, read the books I like. I want more of them. Yeah, I feel like the only other one you do that for is is Wind. Wind. I started doing it with Black Cloak. I'm like everyone, oh. everyone, everyone. I have Black a couple Cloak. friends from Phenomenal. my comic shop, uh, which uh, you know they know they know I'm the artist of this book. And one texted me the other day because uh, he was inviting me out. And I was like, hey, sorry, I got a deadline. Like, and he's like, oh, yeah, by the way, I really like that really crazy panel that you like drew that murder. And I was like, which one? Oh, I don't yeah. like that really narrows it down. <laughs> like, that's always a good, uh, you know, good, good to feel supported, but also having a conversation with your yeah. friends about books that you read, <laughs> except I am the person that made the book. <laughs> I do. I have a friend that sells pins at our shop, and I'm always like, "Your pin sold! Yay! Somebody bought your thing!" That's yes. awesome. I love it. Yeah, I think we're out of issue two. Ooh, I love that. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for supporting the book, and thank you for thank you for strong arming people into reading it. Um, <laughs> My best personality really, trait. It's the best reading experience you can have. Really, is um, you know, like forced at some kind of weapon point. Mm -hmm. And I, I just I just really appreciate you going to that effort. I love it. It's one of those things where like if I love a book, I'm always like, everyone needs to be aware of this. You must. To at least some degree. <laughs> we're uh, we're coming up towards the end of the hour, but I know you guys have so many other things that you're working on. This was your most recent book that came out and I am a third of the way into it. Um, I'm loving it so far. And the, the, the probably the big things have not happened yet. So I will let you know what I think when I finish it. Um, but it's cover alone would be for me a reason to like, be like, so all right, I want to know what this is about. So I don't know who you had do this awesome cover, but it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, my, my tour covers are from Will Stale, who is, I think, one of the best cover artists working in science fiction and fantasy and horror right now. Um, and he just blows it out of the water every time. If you if you pick up that book, you'll see, you know, this very drippy, goopy haunted house on the cover. But the detail that he put in there that I'm just crazy about is that there's light in the windows and you can almost kind of see inside the house through the windows. And it it really brings up this urge and this impulse to like peer in and oh, to snoop and to peek. That's such a theme in the book. You're very He's, good at working yeah. with people who make murder look pretty. <laughs> yeah. I get very lucky in my in my collaborators and my coworkers and the people who work on my stuff. And Liana, you just recently wrapped up uh, True Cult with IDW, mm -hmm. the yeah. trade yeah, boy. Out very soon, right? Yeah, the trade's going to be out in August, which is awesome. Yeah, um, another one yeah if really you like uh, complaining about the man, you'll also <laughs> love True Cult. Uh, very much a very fun, character-driven, bizarre story. It is so much fun, and, like, the characters are great. There's also so much incredible work that Liana did in there with um, like expression. Like I just, yeah. I can picture the character's expressions in my mind sometimes when I'm trying to identify my own emotions. I'm like, how am I feeling right now? And a panel pops into my head um, <laughs> oh, or yeah. a full page um, of someone who's contemplating making a very permanent life decision every yeah. now and then that page <laughs> comes into my mind quite clearly. And it, it's just, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful book. So what you're saying is I need to make a scale of from one to 10, how Bernice are you feeling today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God, please. Mm -hmm. From zero, from zero to one, how Marty are you feeling today? You gotta make it one of those like posts yeah. where you can like scroll through and pick your one. Yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> story. For uh, yeah, I obviously, feel murderous Bernice. Uh, since the book is out, I can kind of talk about it. But for those of you who are about to read it, just pay attention to Marty's expressions during the entire book. Mm -hmm. There's a... Uh, 
I, I love I love when there's those those types of details in books, and especially things that you may not catch the first time. And you go back, you're rereading, you're like, oh, mm-hmm. oh, that was there the whole time. This is why I love working with Scott and, and Sarah. Uh, they both are always down for a background gag, and they're always down for making the smallest background gag, but it takes a long haul. And as yeah. long as I'm willing to do it and they're supportive of it, it happens every time. <laughs> and usually <laughs> there's been multiple times where Scott's been like, oh, no, you don't have to do that. And I'm like, it's too late. I already did it. And it took me all day, but it was to. so worth it. It was so worth it. You don't have to, but we're going to. And same with many things in this boom book there's multiple times where i'm like wait 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 i need to go back and add just a couple more things i actually did that today so <laughs> like i got an idea i love it yeah, it makes it make fun too because you're kind of looking around for those as you start to realize like oh wait that they are doing stuff like that this is intentional mm-hmm. yeah and you've got a lot of covers that have been coming out and after end from yeah. vault you've had the cover mm-hmm. bees and um star trek right I have what is probably a revolving door of Star Trek covers uh, coming out, which is so exciting to talk about and so cool because the Star Trek fandom, everyone is so nice and so rad. And it has been my last entire year of like, I had never really read, uh, like watched or read any Star Trek anything except the movies. Um, So it's been very welcoming and a really cool like, chunk to take on in terms of like watching ip i like made myself watch like that and buffy and a couple other things just based off of all of my collaborators and what they're working on just to like kind of understand like what they're working on and um that and buffy has been my biggest like watching buffy for like the first time yes especially just to buy gailey's run is like (laughs) so fun but also, like, I really enjoyed it as, like, a teen. I just never finished it, right? Or, like, I had watched the movies mm-hmm. and just never watched, like, the TV yeah. shows. And, like, how do you start when you have Deep Space Nine, Next Generation? Like, yeah. it's just these limitless yeah. like amount of content, right? So, mm-hmm. Yeah, and, like, X-Men, too. It's really just you need that one friend to get you into the gateway. And then mm-hmm. you are introduced to, like, their favorite parts and then it kind of like grows from there, right? And then you discover all your favorite parts. It's kind of like Star Wars too, but. I'm doing that right now with one of my friends with Star Wars. I'm making him watch Rebels. I was like, listen, you need to watch all of it, but you got to start with Rebels because Hondo is my favorite character and you need to understand my references. We got to have these conversations. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, What other things do you both have coming up that you're allowed to talk about? (laughs) I think there's, there's probably things that you can't talk about yet. See, most yeah, I think of my stuff is embargoed. Yeah. Um, yes. But there I is know your stuff. station. Um, <laughs> and if you like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, my run of Buffy um, is coming to an end in just a couple of months. So you can you can buy volume one, just came out, the trade paperback. And you can buy uh, single issues. I think volume two is coming out in like a, within the next couple of months. Um, and it's very it's very fun and queer and i have dropped quite a lot of little open trap doors for fanfic writers <laughs> and writers of transformative work. <laughs> You're so, the Lord. come on through <laughs> a whole new door of fan fiction has been it's opened. amazing i love that absolutely uh the only things I can think of is I have uh, Archie coming out, Pop's Chocolate Shop. Uh, I did a short with Jordan Morris, a really rad writer who also wrote or worked on Bubble, um, which I think yeah. is Eisner winning. Uh, yeah. We have a short. If it's in not, that. it should be. Oh, yeah. It is a phenomenal book. Also read that. Like, really I just enjoy it. reading all of my collaborators' stuff because, like, what a plethora of phenomenal content. But uh, that's going to be coming out soon uh, in the next couple months. And I, I'm, I honestly, 
I've worked on so much recently in terms of shorts that I'm like trying to rack my brain. I should just have a post-it note of things that are coming out. Like, really yeah. some, some sort of yeah. anthology shorts coming up. <laughs> If you follow me on uh, on Zest World or Twitter, I usually post my monthly updates of what books are coming out or my covers. So, yeah. And you have some commissions coming up in the future on Zest World. Yeah, uh, I will be at C2E2 this year. I'm a guest. Uh, I guess they just dropped the list. Uh, so I will be at C2E2 at the end of March, and that also is when I will uh, I'll be opening my commission list in March to prepare for that. So you can either pick it up at the show or you can get a digital one, um, whichever suits. Awesome. Very cool. You want some? Awesome. Oh yeah, that's my inked version of Tyler Chin Tanner's Mezzo that he penciled. Yeah. That was very fun. I've only inked a couple of folks uh, work before, so. That's awesome. Very fun. Yeah, I was excited to to grab that on that that sale. We love a good whatnot stream. Yeah. Um, where can, so people can follow you over on Twitter and Zest World. I have, uh, I think I have your Twitter and Instagram linked below. I'll add awesome. the Zest World link after. Where can people follow you, Sarah? Um, you can find me on all social media. My handle kind of across the board is Gailey Frey, that's Gailey spelled like my last name, followed by F-R-E-Y. And you can also find everything I've ever done and ever will do on my website, sarahgailey.com, including links to my newsletter, Stone Soup, where I'm currently running a series of essays on people's connections to food and how food shapes people in, uh, in their communities and their lives. Today, we had an essay come out from a... Um, a Ukrainian author about what it's right trying to celebrate what it's like trying to celebrate Novi God, which is the Ukrainian Russian New Year during a time when um, their country is being invaded and at war. So it's a very powerful essay series. I'm really honored to get to publish um, oh. the writers who I'm publishing, and you can read it for free on my newsletter, and you can find that through my website. Very cool. Awesome. That's that's awesome. I. Your your tw your handle on social media. I do have to ask: is is that at all related to Doctor Who, or is that? Oh, very much. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I, I came up with that handle back before I was a professional anything, and I was like, "How am I going to do Twitter?" And I I very much love Doctor Who, and so y'all. I, I handle, and now I'm trapped in it forever. <laughs> I have wanted to know since I, I saw that, and I figured, you know, it, it would probably come up while we were talking today. I love it. Um, but yeah, thank you both for, for coming on and talking with us. Really appreciate it. Uh, absolutely had a blast. Mm -hmm. I love this book. Yeah. I've been on the hype train since issue one came out. I was like, I like the art, so we're gonna keep going. And then I realized it was you writing it, and I was like, okay, well now we have to keep going. <laughs> Well, thank you so much both for having us. Thank you for supporting the book. This just means the world. And it, it has been such a pleasure to get to chat with you tonight. Yes, you guys. Yeah, are thank you so much. Really appreciate it. I had a blast. <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> oh, More fun talking about slides, slides than we ever now. thought possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to see a water slide ever again and not think no. of this conversation. So long lasting impression. <laughs> Good. Trauma is the goal. Yeah. <laughs> Just gonna leave with a little bit of trauma after every conversation. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who joined us. Um, yeah. Appreciate everyone yeah. all there. Yeah. And anybody Great to see everyone. later. Appreciate you all. Yes. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.